Hey everyone, this is Nitij and welcome back to another video. In this video, I am going to show you uh, some of the best practices that we can use when we are uh, programming in the JavaScript language. So, so many developers who have been uh, coding in JavaScript language for so many years uh, still don't follow uh, some good practices uh, which, uh, which helps us in improving our code to a much uh, greater extent. Now, I have listed down those practices and I'm going to explain all of them uh, one by one. So let's start. And the first one is uh, first one is related to the variables. Now, uh, whenever we uh, declare a variable in the JavaScript, then we do that by first typing the uh, var keyword and then uh, we write the name of the variable. So let's uh, suppose that uh, the name is uh, let's say number one and let's have five variables for different numbers now I'm just going to rename them one by one alright so the thing is uh, we have uh, declared five different variables for five numbers uh, using the var keyword but uh, we can also uh, use a single var keyword to declare all these variables so what we can do is we can simply put a comma instead of a semicolon and then we just have to put them in a single line like we do in the C sharp language if you are aware of how the variables are declared in C sharp language and that's it now you can also uh, maintain the indentation of your variables by simply having them in different lines and that's it uh, you can also assign them uh, different values uh, so let's say number one number two equals to number two number two equals to number three and so on so yeah you don't need to write uh, the var keyword uh, multiple times for every variable which we are declaring and uh, another thing uh, which is related to uh, the variables is that uh, instead of uh, declaring variables uh, between uh, different lines of code uh, I mean um, uh, for let's say that we have uh, some variables at the top and then we have some code and then we are declaring some more variables and then and then uh, we are writing some more code so this is not a very good practice because the thing is that uh, all the uh, variable declarations uh, always get hoisted to the top of the scope and only the initialization uh, gets remained uh, in, in that in, in the place where we have declared and initialized the variable in the code and I have also uh, uh, created a, a video tutorial about hoisting which you can uh, which you can see if you want to learn more about how hoisting works so the thing is that this code will simply convert into uh, this one and then the compiler will simply remove the where, where from here and then uh, the my where will remove to the top of the current scope or the script block and then only the initialization will remain here so if you have uh, any any code which is which which you think you might uh, use before this where variable has been declared then uh, you will get an undefined value instead of this uh, this is string value or whatever value you have assigned to the variable so uh, this is uh, the this is another best practice which we can follow while we are uh, working with variables okay now let's come to uh, caching dom elements so so many times whenever we have uh, whenever we are getting the reference of the DOM elements then we normally use the uh, document either get element by ID or by get element by tag name so let's suppose that I am getting the reference of this of, of this div element this div HTML element in, in this uh, div, div, div variable and now I need to uh, use this divs uh, multiple times so normally what people do is this in, the, instead of you know uh, caching the, the reference of this DOM element into a separate variable what what they do is they uh, 
the, the search uh, or the or the query uh, for this for this div tag again and again whenever uh, they need to use it and this is a really a very bad practice uh, because what will happen is the the, the dom the dom will simply uh, look for the element again and again in the code and it, and it will be a, a performance hit when we are uh, repeating this practice for so many different uh, dom elements and uh, this this thing it becomes even more worse when it, this thing becomes worst uh, when the dom element is nested inside a number of different elements so the when, when the when the number of levels increases for any DOM element, DOM element, then the then time it takes for the uh, for, for the browser to to search for that element becomes uh, more. So it is always a good practice to cache the DOM element into a variable if we are going to use it more than once. So. Yeah, so that was related to the uh, caching of DOM, DOM elements. The third is default values. So this basically applies to, uh, this mostly applies to a constructor function. So a constructor function is a function uh, out of which we create a new uh, JavaScript object. So let's suppose that we have a constructor function for a person. Now this person has a first name, this dot, I'm sorry, this dot first name equals to and then we are accepting uh, the values of the first name and last name uh, from the arguments and then we can set the first name and last name properties of uh, this newly created object from the arguments now the thing is that uh, when we are supplying the values of the arguments then it is fair and good so let's say uh, we are creating where person or where p equals to new person and then i am supplying the value of the first name and last name but what will happen if i am not supplying any values then the thing is that the f name and l name arguments will be undefined and then, and then at the undefined value will uh, get stored in the first name and last name uh, the solution to this problem is we can set default values for the first name and last name if the arguments are undefined so i'm just going to use first name and then last names okay so i will explain you how uh, this code will work so whenever the f name is undefined then this entire expression will be false and if this part is false then the value which is on the right side of this uh, of this or uh, operator will be used and it will be assigned to the first name and uh, the same thing will will happen for the last name so if we have f name and l name undefined then uh, we will have a default value which will uh, which will be assigned to the first name and last name properties so this is a very good practice whenever we are working with objects and we want to use default values now related to this uh, in this specific way of uh, finding out if uh, any uh, if any value or, or, or if any uh, references uh, undefined or not uh, we also use this practice uh, when we are working with modules so a module is in the form of a self-executing function and over here we have a function which will execute uh, as soon as it it, it is uh, read by the browser and in this function this function is accepting the arguments for window as w and let's say that we all that we are also sending the uh, the app object of our application as an argument and window or let's say that the app object is the the capital a and then app so 
what will happen if uh, this app is this app object is null because uh, the uh, the JavaScript code or the JavaScript scripts uh, will uh, load asynchronously and it could happen that uh, this entire module could load before the app has been loaded so in that case what we can do is we can simply write app and then uh, these two pipe symbols and then we can write we can uh, send in a, a send in an empty object uh, using created using the object literal method to this uh, app argument and then our code will keep on running and if we are assigning new properties to this app using this module then the properties would, would get assigned to this empty object and then uh, this empty object would then be treated as the uh, as the as the app as the app object for other modules which are uh, getting loaded after this module so our code will work it will not crash and then finally uh, we have the bind for fixed scope so this basically applies to scenarios when we have to uh, call uh, f functions with a fixed scope and to do that what we do is let's suppose that we have a function which says uh, I don't know let's call it um, you know what let's call it my function it is not doing anything but I'm just going to show you how we can leverage the bind so let's say that we have to call this my function with a fixed scope and this scope uh, needs to be an object uh, and this object could contain some properties which we might be using to do something based on our requirements so uh, we have to call this uh, my function with a fixed scope and the scope is going to be this object and to do that uh, we simply have to write my function dot call and then we have to provide the this argument as an as an argument so uh, every time when we need to raise this function with a fixed scope then we have to call my function dot call and then we always have to send in the send in the uh, object uh, as the scope as an argument but instead of doing this what we can do is we can simply create a new uh, function uh, delegate uh, let's call it my function delegate and equals to and then we can uh, create a new function with a fixed scope out of the my function using bind and then in bind uh, we just have to send the obj and that's it now we don't have to uh, always erase this function or we don't have to always call this function using the uh, call function we can directly call the delegate and the delegate will always have the fixed scope and that's it so uh, that was all about uh, today's session and if you have any questions you can uh, you can post them in the comments section and uh, thank you for uh, watching this video have a good day